have your Bibles, I want us to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. I'm not going to be long today. I'm going to preach a nice, good word, bless us, and position us, and pray, and then release you uh, to get back home and open your presence, if you're doing that, to get back to family, um, and that will be fantastic. Matthew, um, um, uh, Second Corinthians chapter five verse seventeen. As I was as I was waiting on the Lord, um, praying this morning, I just kept on hearing the Spirit of God speaking to me about. Um, us coming to a place where we receive, you know, the world's been talking about a reset, but I believe God wants to give us a spiritual, a spiritual reset. You know, sometimes whenever a computer, for example, is left on uh, for a long time, you know, myself, I'd never, you know, I don't usually use my computer much. I'm an iPad kind of a person, but I do have a desktop and uh, I just use it uh, for background music. But every now and then, you know, you type stuff on there and, um, and, and, and when you leave it long, open for a long time, sometimes things don't work properly. How many of you know what I'm talking about? You know, apps don't function properly. And sometimes they say, you know, when things are not launching like they should and it looks like it's slow and all that, what you've got to do is, uh, is, is, is perform a hard reset or, or, or shut the computer down and start it up again. And when you do that, you're rebooting the whole thing. It starts up again. And I felt like in my spirit that that's something that the Lord uh, wants wants us to do, um, especially coming to the end of the year, because we have to finish well, and we have to position ourselves uh, for the blessing of the Lord in the coming year. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 says this, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, nobody wears clean clothes before they have had a shower. Amen? Is that right, right? You know, you go out in your backyard, especially now that it's raining a lot and the grass, you can't keep up. You know, when it was raining a lot, you hardly, you had to mow twice a, twice a week. How I many of you know what I'm talking about? Otherwise, you're going to end up with a jungle in the backyard and have to pay somebody to come and look after it because you put your mower and it can't go because it's just too long. And so you got to keep, and, and when you're out there working in this heat and humidity, you sweat a lot. Nobody goes into the house and just put on some fresh clothes amen you go and do what you go and shower you go and sh change you clean yourself up take off the old stuff clean yourself up and then you can put on some some clean clothes and so sometimes we as believers we tend to start a new year and ask God for new things you know God God does new things I believe every new year amen how many of you know there's some new things that God wants to do there's some fresh stuff that he wants to do remember Isaiah 43 verse 18 it says do not do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a what? New thing. Now it shall spring forth, shall you not know it. God is always doing something new. The Bible says his, his mercies are new every morning. It's not just once a year, but every single morning when you wake up, you got to wake up with an expectation that something new is about to happen. Something good is about to happen in my life. Amen. God is always doing something new every single day, every single moment, every single, every single year. And so as we come into a new new year i believe we need to position ourselves for the new that god has in store for us so like in the natural we would never you know put on that you know new clothes or clean clothes if we haven't had a shower ourselves if we haven't cleaned ourselves up first because why because when you put on some clean clothes and you haven't taken the time to clean yourself and to take a shower and put some deodorant you would you risk at contaminating or, or making your clothes untidy and dirty again how many of you know what i'm talking about you, you your clothes start smelling of sweat and and though you look clean it kind of smell funky if you know what i mean amen somebody will look at you and tell you you need to take a shower i know you look good but you need a shower because they can smell it because cleanliness is not just about looks it's about smells come on somebody amen 
And so we have to understand that we as believers need to come to that place. So we can't just say, God, I want new blessings. This is a new year. I'm coming up with new resolutions. You know, some people have lost jobs this year. Some people have stopped work this year. You know, God wants to give you an entrepreneurship anointing. He wants to give you a new beginning. The Bible says, Deuteronomy 8.18, it says, For it is God who gives you power to get wealth, that he may establish his purpose on the earth. God wants to release that into your life. But how do you position yourself in that place? How do you get to that place where God can give you the new? Before God can give you the new, sometimes you have to now prepare yourself. And so that's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about the reset. I want to talk about the shower that we need to take to do this morning and, and the taking off of the old so that we can make room for the new. How many of you know God doesn't pour new wine in old wine skin? Amen. So we can't expect new things with an old wineskin, old mindset, old old framework that we have been living in and we've been working in and working in and, and operating in. We can't just say, God, give me something new with this old mind frame. So what God is doing right now is that he's expecting us to come to a place whereby we begin to be renovated in the spirit. We begin to, to, and you know what renovation is? It is getting rid of the old to make room for, room for the new. How many of you have ever done a renovation? It's never easy. It's never, you know, pleasant to look at. Everything is in a mess. There's dust everywhere. But you got to pull the towels out, pull the old bathtub out, and pull this one out, and pull that one, so that you can do what? Make room for the new. You don't put the new with the old. Come on, somebody. Amen. And so if we don't take time to reset ourselves and position ourselves for blessing, then next year will come and it's going to be the same old, same old, same old. Year in, year out. And we're still dealing with the same old, same old, same old. Sometimes God is waiting for us to take a step and make some changes in our own lives so that he can make a change from there. Let me just say this. We wait for him many times when he's waiting for us. He says, draw nigh to me, and I will draw nigh to you. We take the first step first. It's not God. It's us. So we take that step, and then God takes the step. Draw nigh to me, and I will draw nigh to you. And if you read that verse in James, he says, cleanse your hands, ye sinners. Purify your hearts, ye double-minded. That's how you draw nigh to God. He says, draw nigh to me and I will draw nigh to you. And then in the same verse, he tells us how. He says, cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. So how do we get close to God? Why? We get close to God by what? Cleansing our hands and purifying our hearts of a double-minded nature. That's how we get close to God. Or that's how we position ourselves so that we can be able to draw nigh to him. And when we draw nigh to him, then he draws near to us. So the, the responsibility of coming into close proximity with the Lord begins with us and it begins with what we are going to do. So we have to do some spring cleaning. We've got to look at our house and decide, you know what, there's some things that need to go out. Amen. we got to go into the shed. Come on, somebody. Open it up and say, you know what, we got to go and... <laughs> <laughs> Amen. We got to go and throw out, you know, you got, you got four lawn mowers. One works, the other three don't. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Sometimes you got to make some room, praise God, and get rid of some of that stuff. Get rid of the cobwebs and all the boxes and all the papers and all the stuff that has accumulated there and all the junk so you can make room for something new, something fresh. You can begin the year in a good way. So it says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, the first thing that we need to do in order to reset, according to what the Bible says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the first thing is that we need to examine ourselves whether we are in Christ. Are we in Christ? Now, how do we know we're in Christ? Whenever you're in Christ, there's three aspects of your life that will be impacted. Acts chapter 17 verse 28 gives us those three aspects. He says, for in him we live. For in him we move. For in him we what? Have our being. Those are three areas of your life. If you want to know if you're in Christ, these three areas will always give you an indication whether you're in Christ or you're not in Christ. 
Remember, those who are going to have a reset are those who are what? In Christ. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, is what? A new creation. So if we are not in Christ, if, how do you know that? You're not, whether you're in Christ or not, if you're, these three areas of your life are not in tune with Christ, then we need to make those resets this morning. We need to make those adjustments. For in Him we live. So God wants us to live in Christ. Now, who is Christ, first of all? In the beginning was what? The Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Verse 14 of John chapter 1 says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So the Word of God is Christ. Christ is the Word, and the Word is Christ. Amen. If, if you, and, and so Christ wants us, the Bible tells us that if you abide in me and my Word abides in you, then whatever you ask, God says he will what? He will do it for you. And so God is calling us back into the word. He wants uh, the word to adjust us and not us to adjust the word. Come on, somebody. You know, we can come. Worldliness is, is if you want to know the spirit of worldliness, the spirit of worldliness is whenever we allow our lifestyle to begin to shape or reshape what God said. But we need to allow God's word to shape and to reshape our values and, and our mindsets and, 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 and what we are believing. We need to get back under the word. We have to get back in the word. And we have to ask ourselves, are we in the word? In him we live. In him we live. We've got to live in the word. We need to walk in the word. We need to move in the word. As a matter of fact, our prayer life is, only, is powerful whenever you are praying from in him. Because the Bible says, if you are in him and his words word abide in you, you shall ask for anything and it shall be done for you by my Father which is in heaven. Amen. Glory be to God. And so, I, I, and, and this is something I, I remember teaching some, some, maybe a year back. We are in him for transformation, but he is in us for salvation. Amen. If you abide in me, and my word abides in you. So he's in me for salvation, but I am in him for transformation. You see, it is possible to have him in you, but you not be in him. How many of you know what I'm talking about? It is possible to be saved and not be sanctified. It is possible to say Jesus is the Lord of Jesus is the savior of my life, but is he the Lord of your life? When he's in you, he's your savior. But when you're in him, he's your Lord. That means he now controls me. Everything about my life, he controls me. He controls my living every day, how I live my life. If he speaks to me, I obey. You see, Abraham was in him. His word, God's word was in Abraham and Abraham was in God. God. When God spoke to Abraham and even commanded him, Abraham obeyed God. Even to the point whereby when God said, give me your son. Now become a dad. I now understand that scripture in a new way. Praise God. Amen. When he said, give me your son, he was so much into God and God into him that he knew that he knew that he knew that if God asked for it, there is a reason and that God's intention is always good. Hallelujah. He never disobeyed. He never fought with God. He never wrestled with God. He never go to a place whereby he never allowed God to come into, you know, for him to step into the Lord. He allowed God to change him. So in him we live. That means I will go only where God goes. So if I, my life is in him, in him I live. Why am I in a place that God wouldn't be in? I cannot find myself, or I should not find myself in a place that Christ himself will possibly not find himself. So when, I'm, when, when, when Christ is in me, or rather when I'm in him, he controls where I go. He, he, he leads me, he directs me, he leads my paths. Most of us may want to be living maybe on the Gold Coast, but you're here because you're in Christ. Come on, somebody. Amen. Some of us may want to move to Hawaii, but you're here because you're what? In Christ. The Lord keeps you here. You are a prisoner of Jesus Christ, like Paul. Prisoners don't go where they sleep when they're told to sleep. They get up when they get told to get up. How many of you know prisoners don't have freedoms? 
And these are good, these are, these are good, this is a, I would rather be a prisoner of Christ, amen, than be a prisoner of the world and of the flesh. Because that is true freedom. The very definition of freedom is when you become indebted to him. Paul said, I am a prisoner of Christ. That means he didn't just go where he wanted to go. He did, he served God. Anywhere he moved, anywhere he went, he went because the Lord led him there. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Sometimes when you're in him, the spirit of God will take you where your flesh doesn't want to go. One of the hardest things to do is to apologize to people. How many of you know what I'm talking about? But when you're in him, you will find yourself going to say, I'm sorry. I apologize. He will lead you. He will guide you. He causes you to come to a place where your flesh feels like he's being crucified every single time. For I am crucified with Christ. When you're in him, your flesh many times will feel like he's being crucified. He will lead you. He will guide you. In him we live. In him we live. The Bible says in him we move. That's the second area. Your movements have to be in Christ. If any man be in Christ is a new creation, how can we be reset to become new creation? Can we be positioned? Not only our living should be in Christ, but our movement should also be in Christ. Now, when it comes to movement, one of the things that tends to attack believers and we tend to move by these things is, is something called offense. We tend to move in offense. We tend to leave things in offense. How many of you know what I'm talking about? We tend to move from here to there in offense. But God doesn't want us to move in offense. He wants us to move in him. In him, we move. That means even if we're in a place and we're offended, we don't move in offense if Christ still wants us to be in that place. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. It will affect your movement. So if you want to know if you're in Christ, look at how you move. If we cut people off, if we turn people away, if we throw people out, it should never be because of offense. We need to move and make sure that our moving is in the love of God. Our moving is in compassion. Our moving, how God leads us, how God moves us. He moves us and he takes us to places and we are moving. Even when we feel where God is taking us is not a safe place. The Bible says that Jesus went to that place knowing that the people in that place might stone him. Remember when he went to Lazarus' house? They said, why are you going there? The people in that place... Just the other day tried to stone you. But Jesus went because Lazarus was dead. How many of you know he went because of his compassion? He never cared about himself or his own safety. But he saw somebody that he loved, that he cared for. And he put himself in that position for their sake. Even if it meant that he himself was now in danger. That is called moving in Christ. Sometimes when you move in Christ, we, we, we tend to be selfless in what we do. We're not selfish. We're selfless. We're actually putting other people's interests before our own interests. For in him we live. For in him we, uh, for in him we live. For in him we move. In him we live. And in him we have our being. The third thing. The third thing is impossible without the first two. If we live in him and we move in him, then we will have our being in him. Hallelujah. Our being in him is going to be because of our first two. If we move in him and we live in him, then we will have our being in him. Who you are in Christ, this has to do with who's, not just who you are, but who you are in Christ. Praise God. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ... If these three aspects are in Christ, the Bible says then you begin to become a new creation. That means that God begins to transform you and position you for the new. Position you for the breakthrough and the blessing. He is a new creation. And this is what begins to happen. He says the old things have passed away. And all things have become what? New. 
So the old things are passed away. God begins to take away the old. He begins to take away all the smelly, stinky, sweaty stuff of the past. The things that defined you. The things that you thought you were. He begins to remove these things and he begins to give you a fresh identity in him. Glory be to God. He says he is a new creation. A new creation. You become a brand new creation. It's like God has re-engineered you. He has recreated you. He has given you a fresh start. And let me just say this. In this new year, 2022, we are believing God for a fresh start in every area of our lives. Amen. How many of you are believing God for a fresh start? You know, you can have spiritual goals. You can have financial goals. You can have health goals. Amen. You can choose, you can, you know what, starting of the new year, I'm going to work out in the gym every day. That's a health goal. Praise God. If any man be in Christ is a new creation, God will give you the grace for the new. He will give you the grace to be able to walk in the new. So when it comes to the new, there are many things that we can decide we're going to do. I'm going to have these new resolutions, these new things I'm believing in God. This coming year, I'm going to start a business. I'm going to get on YouTube, get books and read and study until I get knowledge and understanding so I can begin to launch into something. You've got, you've got to come to a place of determination that this is what I'm going to do. Come up with a plan. If you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. And you're going to start the new year with a plan. Amen. You're going to start it with a plan. You're going to say, God, give me a plan for the new year. What is your plan? What is the plan of heaven for my life for this coming year? And as you begin to connect with God, you begin to receive God's new. Not just our new, but God's new. God has got something good for you for 2022. Hallelujah. And so you need to come to that place where you begin to say, I don't have much many days before this year begins to come to an end. There's only a few days left. Next Sunday is going to be a new, new year, the first Sunday of the new year. So begin to position yourself. Having done all to stand, begin to prepare yourself. Begin, start the year with a plan. Get something, come up with a plan. Whether it's a spiritual, I'm going to read five chapters every day out of my Bible. Make that plan. Begin to come up with that plan. And you know what? It is the grace of God that will enable you to be able to survive and to be able to go through with the new that he has for you. He says, therefore, if anyone be in Christ, he is a new creation. God wants to give you new things. He wants to give you, he wants to recreate your vision. He wants to give you a fresh mandate. He wants to give you a fresh impetus to press into the things of God. He says, the old things are passed away. The lethargy, the tiredness, the weakness, the, the procrastination, all that will be passed away. Why? Because when you ask him to make you anew, the things that kept you in the old begins to pass away. This year we procrastinated. I'm going to do it tomorrow. I'm going to do it tomorrow. I'm going to do it tomorrow. You know what? When you start in Christ, you become a new creation. The old is passed away. He removes the procrastination. And when you step into the year, there's something in you that causes you not to sit back until you see it get done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Otherwise, the old will follow you into the new year and you will find that the same struggles that you had then is the same struggles that you have now. Anytime God helps you to cross over, he crosses you over and his determination is that the Egyptians that you see now, you shall see them no more. Hallelujah. I said you shall see them no more. You shall see them no more. So say bye-bye to the Egyptians. The Egyptians are everything that has an assignment to take you back to Egypt. Everything that has an assignment to hold you, to keep you in captivity, keep your finance, keep your health, keep your freedom, keep you in a place of bondage. Everything that has got an assignment to hinder you from stepping into the freedom of God. The Bible says when you cross over to the other side, the Egyptians that you see right now, you shall see them no more. So you need to finish this year knowing that we're going to say what? Bye-bye to the Egyptians. Amen. How many of you know God's going to give you a new start? Hallelujah. 
Don't allow the old to follow you. Don't allow the same old, same old to come with you into the new level, into a new life, and in a new chapter. Don't allow the old to continue to come after you and try to bind you up and mess you up. But you get to a place where you say, God, cleanse me, purify me so that the old will stay in yesterday. I'm stepping into the new. Do you know the children of Israel, this is what God said. He said, he said to them, he said to Moses, Moses, go and lift up your rod. And he says that the waters began to open. How many of you know anytime you need to take a bath, you need water? Amen. Amen. That talks about baptism. It talks about going through the waters. And so he says, if you go through these waters and you get to the other side, whatever has been chasing you in the land, the moment you get in the water, it cannot follow you from then on. Because you're washing away the old. So there's folks that we need to forgive. We can carry offense against folks into next year. Amen. Leave that offense right here in this year. Leave all that you know, luggage and all that, all that, all that, all that load, just leave it in 2021. Don't carry that with you into the new year. Leave all that stuff behind. You better go and write down names and say, you know what, you, you did this to me and I forgive you in Jesus' name. Because I'm going to step into a new year with a new disposition. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not letting this stuff come with me. Thank you for the closed doors. There's a door that God is about to open for me. Thank you for that old season, but there's a new season that God has in store for me. And I'm about to step into the new season. So you better learn to say goodbye to your Egyptians. Say goodbye to your old associations with the old that, that kept you in captivity, kept you in bondage, kept your finance in bondage. It's, it's time that we begin to say goodbye to that stuff of the past because God is about to make a way for the new. Somebody say, next year is going to look different than this year. They may say to you, it's going to be the same old, same old. Let me just say this. The path of the righteous grows brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. Even to the perfect day. The glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. So don't let the world condition your expectation that it's going to just get worse and worse. And look at the world and all the troubles in the world and the problems here. Let me tell you, it's going to get worse for the world but we are in the kingdom for those who are in the kingdom darkness will cover the earth and gross darkness the people but for the people of God arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you and God is calling us right now to begin to arise and not to retreat and hide. It's time for Gideon to come out of the cave and begin to take territories that the enemy has been taken. It's time for us to overcome fear and intimidation and, and anxiety and understand that God is calling us out of the cave. God, Gideon, you are a mighty man of valor. The world will tell you you are the least in your father's house. And your father's house is the least in the tribe. And your tribe is the least in the country. But the devil is a liar. You are in the kingdom of God. And as one who is in the kingdom, your future is better than your past. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody prophesy to yourself and say, my 2022 is going to be better than my 2021. Amen. Come on. Thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established of you. Open your mouth and say in the name of Jesus my 2022 is going to be better than my 2021. I'm coming out of debt. Come on somebody. I'm getting streams of income coming my way. I'm getting finances coming my way. God is going to open doors in places and avenues and it's going to be supernatural. I'm not going to be, be the one to open doors but God is going to make a roadway in the wilderness. You got to understand, it was a man that opened the waters that Moses, the Mo, you know, that parted the waters. God is the one that did it. How many of you know in 2022, it's not by mind, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. I came to preach to somebody and help somebody position themselves for the blessing of the Lord. Position yourself for the new that God has in store for you. Can I tell you what the new looks like? 
Isaiah 43. And I'm going to begin to close with this. Isaiah 43 verse 18 to 21. It says, do not remember the former things. Somebody say, I'm not going to even remember 2020 and 2021. Somebody say, amnesia. Praise God. I'm not carrying that stuff. It's not going to mess my mind. I'm not going to get frustrated. I'm not going to get depressed about it. God is giving me a new mindset that whatever may have happened in the past is in the past. He said, do not remember the former things. Nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now shall it spring forth. God is saying it shall spring forth. That means it looks like it's been buried and the devil thought it's buried and your destiny is buried and your future is buried. But God's going to cause it to spring forth. Hallelujah. Somebody say springing forth. Now it shall spring forth, shall you not know it. God is saying, you're not even going to know how it happened. People will say, how did you do this? I don't know. That will be your response. How many of you know God's going to do it? He knows how to put people in your path. He knows how to open doors. He knows how to create opportunities. You could be in a supermarket lining up to pay for grocery. And in person in front of you is the one that is your destiny helper. God is the one that knows how to put people in positions. You won't even know it. You wouldn't even know. You'll just say, well, I was in the bank and I was lining up and somebody was behind me. And while I was telling the teller this, they tapped on my shoulder and told me I can help you with that. My company does it. Let me tell you, God can put you in the right place with the right people at the right time. Shall you not know it? You can't orchestrate it. You can't try to control it. You can't try to make it. God is saying it shall spring forth and you wouldn't even even know. You wouldn't even know how it happened. Somebody is about to receive unexpected blessings. Somebody is about to receive unusual, unexpected blessings in 2022. He says this, shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. This is what the new looks like. The new looks like God making a way where there seems to be no way. How many of you need God to make a way where there seems to be no way in 2022? God wants you to know that your the government is not your source. Your boss is not your source. He becomes your source. In other words, he will make a way where there seems to be no way. This is what the new that God has in store for you looks like. He says, I will make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Even in the midst of hardship, God will still water whatever you have put in the ground. Whatever you have sold, whatever you have, you, have, you, have, you, have, you, have, you have invested, God is saying even in the midst of adverse conditions, I will still cause it to produce. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That means that 2022, come hell or high water, you're still being blessed. He says, and rivers in the desert, and he says, and the beasts of the field will honor me. The jackals and the ostriches, because I give waters in the wilderness, in the desert, to give drink to my people, my chosen. And God is saying, because of my provision, because of what I'm going to do in your life, because of what I'm going to release in your life, everything that would have been a threat will respect you because of what I have done. He talks about the beasts. I know in Australia we don't understand beasts. Because we can go anywhere in Australia safely. But coming from Africa, we've got lions and leopards and cheetahs. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Hyenas and, and, and wild dogs and all kinds of stuff. And because of that stuff which is in the land, you can't just go into any territory because of these animals. Amen. In Australia, the best way of for Australians to understand it, it's like trying to swim in the rivers up north in Darwin. Praise God. Does that make sense now? (laughs) It may look safe, but it's not safe. Amen. I've seen some videos that have put me off swimming. Praise God. I'm not there. Can't swim in the ocean as jellyfish. Can't swim in the river as crocodiles. 
bless the Lord, stay on land. You're safe there. <laughs> or come down, to, come down to Queensland, down here. We're safer here. Praise God. Amen. And so we got to understand that whenever there are dangers in the, in the place, it limits where you can go. It's territory that you may not be able to step into. But God says, I will make a roadway in the wilderness and rivers in the desert that even the beasts that are in that place will honor you because of me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that means that there's no territory that you cannot go. There's no territory that will keep you out. There's no territory that you will be so intimidated that you can't step into. Come on, somebody. Right now, we are living in a time of COVID. Everybody's scared. We walk everywhere. Scared of going here. Scared of going there. Because of this, that, and the other. Let me tell you, if God be for you, when you walk with him, he will make the beasts that are in the territory to fear you. They will honor you for his sake. And let me just say this. Take whatever you got to take. Do whatever you got to do. But at the end of it, Jesus is your safety. He's your real protection. A thousand may come in one side and, and you know, and, and, and ten thousand. But it shall not come nigh your dwelling place. They'll come against you one way, they'll scatter seven ways. Why? Because greater is he who is on the inside of you than he who is in the world. So having done all to stand, stand therefore. Hallelujah. Let Jesus come in. Let the line of the tribe of Judah roar from the inside of you. He says, the beasts of the field will honor me. The jackals and the ostriches because I give water in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. These people I have formed for myself. They shall declare my praise. They shall declare my praise. That means at the end of this year, you shall have a praise. At the end of this year, as a matter of fact, every month, there shall be a praise in your mouth. There's going to be a praise in your lips. There's going to be a dance in your steps. God is going to do something for somebody in this place. And I'm trusting God that when you begin to understand the new that God has in store for you, he's about to release blessings and blessings and blessings that you won't even have room enough to receive. If you just position yourself eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered the heart of man, the things that God has in store for him, for those who love him. Amen. There's some blessings that God wants to release, but we have to position ourselves. We need to position ourselves. I want us to stand up on our feet, and I want you right now to begin to examine your life and say to the Egyptians right now who are pursuing you in 2020, 2021, tell those Egyptians, you will not cross with me into the new year. Begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray. Begin to pray. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, we begin to praise you. We begin to glorify your name. We magnify your name. We glorify your name. Father, we speak to the Egyptians. We speak to everything that is trying to keep us in the now, in, the, in this year, and the frustrations of this year. And we're commanding these frustrations to stay behind in the mighty name of Jesus. Now begin to pray for your finance. Because before they left Egypt, God said to them, go to the Egyptians. And you tell the Egyptians, you turn my wealth out of your pockets, out of your safes, and you give them to me. Because when you leave to the other side, you're going to live with all the blessing of the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, begin to speak right now to everything that has been eating your harvest. The canker worm and the palmer worm that has been destroying the work of your hands. Begin to speak to it and say, you shall not cross with me. As a matter of fact, I am taking back whatever it is that you have stolen. I am taking back my breakthrough. I'm taking back my blessing. I'm taking back my ministry. I'm taking back my anointing. I'm taking back everything that belongs to me. I'm going right now in 
into the enemy's camp. I bind a strong man in Jesus' name. I shall not be fearful. I would not be intimidated. But I'm taking back the breakthrough and the blessing of the Lord over my life. Come on right now for two more minutes. Begin to press into God. Begin to press into God. There are people you need to forgive. There are people you need to let go of. Maybe it is that you've lost your job. Maybe you've lost things this year. Just say, God, I forgive them. Because where there's a closed door, there's going to be another open door. If he that opens and no one shuts, and shuts and no one opens, God can open doors that no man can shut. He can open streams, streams of incomes that, that cannot dry out because they are coming from the presence of the Lord. There is a river whose streams make glad. There is a river that flows from the presence of God. And Father, we thank you because our provision is coming from you. Our breakthroughs are coming from you. So right now we are shaking off every fiber, every snake, every viper that has beaten us in 2021. We shake it off right now. We neutralize the poison. We will not right now succumb to the issues that have come in this year. We are shaking off every snake, shaking off every serpent, shaking off every failure, shaking off every but opportunity, every tragedy, every letdown, every betrayal, we shake it off right now. Shake it off into the fire right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, as we forgive them, as we release them, our destiny is being released. You are forgiving us. You are cleansing us. You are purifying us. We are going through the waters right now. That you're washing us in our inner man, in our spirit man. Father God, all the stuff of this year will stay in this year. So Father, we forgive folk as we get ready to cross over into the new year. We are letting them go. We release them. We release them. We release them. If you got to forgive the government, forgive them. If you got to forgive policemen, forgive them. If you got to forgive some restaurant, forgive them. If you got to forgive your neighbor, forgive them. Your husband, your wife, your kids, your grandkids, just forgive them. Release them right now in the name of Jesus. That colleague with you in your workplace that didn't do you right, don't carry that into the new year. Don't allow the stuff of this year to keep you in this year. In the name of Jesus, we decree and declare as we step in into the new year, we are leaving that stuff behind. And we are releasing those people. And as we release them, we thank you that we are being released. That we are being freed. We are being freed. We are being freed. We are shaking off every serpent, every negative thing that have tried to take us out in 2020. We shake it off right now. Disappointment, depression, anxiety, fear. We're shaking you off right now. We shall not go with us into the new year. You will not move with us into the new year. God, we thank you that the shalom of God shall be our portion. The peace of God that passes all understanding shall guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And so, Father, we pray for the plan of heaven for our lives. I alone know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Jeremiah 29 and 11. I alone know the plans that I have for you. Plans to give you, uh, uh, to give you life and to give you hope. And it says to give you an expected end. Father God, I thank you that the end we are expecting is the end that we shall get. The good end. We shall not have any unexpected ends in 2020. Thank you, Father, for your plan. Thank you for your plan. We ask you for your plan. Give us your plan. I know we have our own plan. Many are the plans in a man's heart, but only the purpose of the Lord shall stand. So, Father, we pray for your plan. We are praying for your purpose that it shall become clear to us that we shall know it. We shall, we shall, we shall see it clearly. Give us your plan. Give us your revelation in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God. We pray for God's plan. God's plan is perfect. It doesn't need adjusting. It doesn't need modification. It is 
perfect from the beginning to the end. God's plan is perfect. So Father, we ask you for your plan because your plan makes all things to work together for good. Whether they are closed doors, they will work for good. Whether they are lost opportunities, work to, together for good. Whether they are lost jobs, God's plan will make that work together Amen. for good. Yes. So Father, we thank you for your plan. That at the end of next year, the end of 2022, we shall look back and say thank you for moving me from the situation I was in into the breakthrough and the miracles that you have in store for me. Oh, Father, we thank you. Come on, begin to praise him. Even before December of next year, praise him like it's already done. Like it's already accomplished. Like it's already finished. Father, we praise you. The next year, no evil shall come nigh our dwelling place. I thank you, Father God, that we prophesy into our new year. We are prophesying into our new year. As we come to the end of this year, we are speaking in the mighty name of Jesus that the new year is secure January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, all 12 months, we plead the blood of Jesus over those months. And I speak this word in the mighty name of Jesus. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress all year of 2022 you will be our refuge and our fortress our God in him we will trust surely he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence somebody shout amen, amen. he shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge his truth shall be your shield and your buckler you shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day. Nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil, I decree this in Jesus' name. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come nigh your dwelling. Somebody say, Corona, you have losing my address. In Jesus' mighty name. For he shall give his angels charge over you. Come on, somebody say thank you for the angelic host. To keep you in all your ways. That means in your job, in your family, in every area of your life. Psalm 91 is your psalm for 2022. The Bible says, for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. And in their hands, they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent. You shall trample underfoot because he has set his love upon me. Remember we said in him and us you know, he's in us and we're in him. Because he has set his love upon me. Therefore, I will deliver him. And I will set him on high. Promotion is coming to you in 2022. Because he has known my name, he shall call upon me and I shall answer him. That is your portion in 2022. And I will be with him in trouble. Even if trouble finds you, he shall be with you in trouble. I'm speaking to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When you are in the fiery furnace, look for the fourth man. He's going to appear with you even in the midst of trouble. He says, I shall be with you in trouble and the fire shall not consume you.
Glory be to God. He says, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. And I will deliver him and I will honor him. That is your portion. Deliverance and honor. God is about to put honor on your head. With long life. Somebody say long life. I'm not going to die before my time in Jesus' name. Come on, speak to death right now. In the name of Jesus, I'm not living until my time is up. Come on, somebody. There will be no premature anything. Until I can say it is finished, I'm still going to keep breathing. With long life, I will satisfy him. That means you live till you're tired of living. Like I always say, if I give you a big jug of water, you drink it when you're thirsty, you drink it until your thirst is quenched. That's when you stop drinking. That means God will let you live until you're tired of living. Until you say, okay, my time has come. Lord, I'm ready to go. With a long life, I will satisfy him. And if there's anything that tries to take you before your time, then the next verse comes into play and show him my salvation. Come on, somebody. They tell you you got cancer. Guess what? He will show you his salvation. Why? Because he told you that with long life, he will satisfy you. So anything you might may try to cut you short, then the salvation part comes into play. Somebody said that is for me. I'm, sp I'm standing on that for me and my house. Me and my house. Lift up your hands before the Lord. We're going to close right now. Father, I speak these blessings over your people. Not only for this year, but for next year. I pray that you position them. That from today, as we leave this place, the blessing of the Lord will follow us. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. Not some of them, not most of them, but all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever. Somebody shout amen. amen. Hallelujah. 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 Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Come on, give him praise one more time. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is finished. May the Lord release the finishing anointing on your life. May you receive that finishing anointing. May you receive the finishing anointing. May you tie up every loose end. May nothing that has bothered you in this year follow you into the next year. I decree that in Jesus' mighty and holy name. Somebody shout amen. Hallelujah. I love you with the love of the Lord. We got tea and coffee at the back. Feel free to grab yourself a cup of and uh, wish somebody a happy new year because you may not see them till next year. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming. God bless you. I speak the blessing of the Lord. You are covered. Come on, your health is covered. I speak health and safety. God covers you and protects you as you leave this place in Jesus' name. Till we see each other again by the grace of God next Sunday. God bless you. Love you with the love of the Lord. Amen and amen.